Ender Lilies, Quietest of the Night was a fantastic game, and while at the studio they followed up with Redemption Reapers, a tactical experience that disappointed many, they now return with Ender Magnolia, a direct sequel. Now I will say here, this is currently in early access, and it intends to be so for the next 6 to 12 months. That means many elements could change, but what I've seen this far, it impresses, and I want to run you through all of that today. My name's Alex, this is XP Corner, and if you enjoy the video, subscribe, it helps out the channel a huge amount. Now if you do want to see my playthrough, check out the video in the pinned comment. It's an hour and a half of gameplay with commentary, which I uploaded to our gameplay channel, Game Corner. So first of all, what does this early access include? Well, we're getting one town and four locations to explore, and while the initial areas are relatively small and linear, it quickly introduces an area that is sprawling in its design. It is, once again as well, still a work in progress, and they are looking here for feedback. Now for those who are willing to invest early, you will be receiving a discount. It is $19.99 USD, but they have stated that that price will increase at full launch. It's so a story, and much like the first game, I wouldn't say it's taking a backseat, but it's only slowly revealing the true nature of the mission ahead. This far, we've met three homunculus, the monsters that were possessed in the original game, probably butchering the pronunciation, but here we've managed to tune them, meaning bring them to our sides. They all seem to have memories missing, and that goes for ourselves too, and now we are out to learn more. So this game is basically set 10 years following the original, and this mission is going to be taking us through the land of fumes. The first game, it set the stage, then pretty much let the narrative take a back seat. I'm hoping they don't do that same thing here, but I'm already seeing many of the same ideas in its delivery, namely a new cutscene for each of the boss encounters which adds a dash more context, and then notes that can be found. Gameplay then, and if you've played Ender Lilies, this is understandably very similar. We do however control a new character this time around, Lilac, and while Lilies was generous with unlocking moves and abilities, this one appears to be even more so because within an hour, my attack choices were opening up. I was leveling up each of these monsters. They have a few options each basically that you can add on with the right items. And I was finding relics. These add buffers and the early options are less fire damage and more attack power. I was also surprised to find within this same hour I unlocked fast travel, which I really do appreciate as often games hold onto this for way too long. This basically when you use it takes you to a number of save stations where you can rest, recover health, recover heals, they're displayed under your health meter in the upper left of the screen, and then you can modify your squad as well. You can also read past notes that you found and also rewatch past cutscenes. When it comes to difficulty then, there's no options currently, it says it's coming in the full game, and it's really tough to say what this is kind of preset to. Bosses naturally do spike, but for the most part, it did feel like a gentle learning curve, and enemies progressively push you through new attack patterns. Also, the range of the attacks, it demands you leverage your different monsters. Eventually, they also get things such as shields, which you must whittle down to stagger them. Already though, once again in just a couple of hours, I faced off against four bosses, and the last one in a tower was particularly brutal. Also, I'm noticing in the pause menu, there is a boss rush option, but it is not available yet. I think when I reflect on the first game, one of my main issues was the combat. It never felt quite right, the dodge was a little difficult to manage, and if anything our lead was a dash floaty. Now while I do have some of the same concerns at this juncture, I'm seeing improvement. I feel more weight in the character, and the combat moves they feel more responsive. So far then we have a sword welding knight, one that does a dash attack but has a slow cooldown timer, and then a support who fires bullets for a limited time. Once again then we can dodge which provides invincibility frames, and what I don't like at this point is enemy attacks are a little unusual to read currently with that dash. A few felt off in regards to when invincibility frames would work, and I don't like the fact if you do want to sprint as well, you must dash and then hold it down, which led to me diving off of ledges by mistake. Just attach sprint to a stick click, I think that would be much better. 
These complaints are minor, this is why the game's in early access, I do want to be very clear about that. For a game in early access, it is looking to be a step up from the original, it's exactly what we want, the world is incredible to explore, it's clear there's a huge amount of secrets to uncover, such as the occasional secret pathway, the cast is interesting, and the combat's definitely going the right direction. Once I unlocked double the jump as well, I ended up doing some backtracking, I wanted to see what I could now find. A big change I also really liked as well actually, the map is so much better. Right now you can click the right stick to expand it on screen, but it shows so much detail. The doors are locked, areas you've completely uncovered, minor hints on what may be contained there, and honestly just more from there. That is a quality of life fix and in my opinion a massive one. When it comes to picking up the game then it really depends on how much you want to play a part in the development of the experience. It's not a huge amount of content but they are asking for that direct feedback. I do want to be transparent as well or while I would have happily parted with my cash personally, they were kind enough to send me a review copy which I do appreciate. Alright let's talk about the visuals then and stunning as with the first game but if this small section is anything to go by it's about to dial things up to 11. The game was no doubt always stunning, it had that vanilla wear hand drawn style to it. But this one it seems to have had a little bit more life pumped into it and the visual effects such as fog really add to it. On top of this I'm finding there's more colour from perfect looking cities in the distance to beaten down locations. It just seems to have a little bit more variety or at least immediately so. The bosses and general monster design then incredibly well done. We have everything from small grunts to encounters that fill the screen. And what I mentioned earlier here this is kind of part of the problem actually. The ramp is nice for difficulty but it can be tough to get a read on the hitboxes and how to leverage the dash and that's because some of these massive monsters your dash actually isn't quite powerful enough to remove yourself from the animation. On top of this then finally another positive menus are clean and simple to navigate and the cutscenes they have this almost dreamy quality to them that really matches the world. Audio finally and this is probably where I want to see the most work. First it does feature music and it is absolutely stunning that kind of mythical orchestral vibe to it all and then on top of that the attacks and the weapons do sound great however I do think there's a lot missing at this point and that does make sense it is in development. Basically though you're going to notice just effects that are missing you'll notice the cutscenes and nothing but music you know give us some voice acting and then big moments as well are like when you tune a beast there's really nothing that reflects the grand nature of what is about to happen. I'm sure that will come with full release and I do think it's going to make a massive difference. So based on this early access I'm going to say be excited for Ender Magnolia. It seems they are doing everything right in my book, maintaining what we loved but fine tuning areas that needed it and taking things up a step. The gameplay feels good, the combat's feeling better, the world is slowly opening up, the map is now easier to navigate and the enemies as horrifying as ever. I'll be keeping a close eye on this one and whenever release may be, they say 6 to 12 months, expect to find a full review right here on XP Corner. So will you be checking this one out? Let us know in the comments with that. Hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, deals, news and lists weekly and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.